Welcome everybody to the Healing Place podcast. As you can tell by the clarity of my voice, I have purchased a new microphone for the podcast, stepping it up in the podcast game with a Yeti Blue. Uh, Very excited by that. So there'll be more clarity for these wonderful conversations that I have with healers from across the globe. And uh, today's episode is one of the pandemic self-care Facebook Live conversations I've had uh, early on when the pandemic first hit back in March and April. 36 amazing, beautiful podcast guests who had previously been on the show had joined me for these pandemic self-care live conversations. So I am sharing them now in the audio version. All right. Until next time, remember, be gentle with yourself. Hey, everybody. It always tells me we're preparing. There we are. Now we're live on Facebook. So welcome back to our conversations on pandemic self-care. And then we'll go into some other care discussions as well. And I'm I'm very excited to have with me today, John D. Whitus. So welcome, John D. Thanks. I'm glad to be back. Yes, I'm I'm happy to have you here. We had a little chat before we hit uh, record or not record, going live, which is so awesome. Um, We're going to talk a little bit about um, some some self-care and then co-regulation and yeah so but first tell let people know what it is that who you are and what you do great my name is john d and uh, the last name john d whitest nobody remembers that anyway but you know not having reached share proportions john d whitest and what i do is i go around and i help people feel better fast so i have a private practice yes like most of us probably listening but also i'm a trainer i'm a master trainer of trainers with efti which is the oldest original and registered charitable educational association way too many words what does that mean (laughs) it's a non-commercial uh association of people like myself that train eft and tapping professionally and we do it at the highest standards that we can and we're even a registered charity so it is not a smokescreen non-commercial kind of place non-profit we actually mean it and so what do we try to do we try to stretch gary craig's original tapping uh diaspora into an even greater than his own eight or nine million across the globe. We try to keep that going. It's a, it's, it's a legacy and a privilege. And what does that mean? It means that this tool, which we know from our last conversation, or if you missed that real quick, it's, it does three kinds of care, which is why it's so wonderful. And I call it the people's toolbox. Self-care, crucial and non-negotiable, it's perfect peer-to-peer care. We all need that. That's the connection that ends isolation, and we all need that. Perfect. And then at deeper levels, like an iceberg, those of us who are skilled in doing it because of practice and certification and accreditation and all the things we go through to make sure that we give the public the finest we have to offer, that's when we use it at the deepest therapeutic care level for traumatic relief and release and things like that. But look, all three of those things are so wonderful. Somebody is going to get some great relief out of any one of those levels and all of are possible. Yeah. So that's what I do. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I love it that you said connection because I'm not kidding when I say you're maybe my 14th live of past podcast guests. And I think the word connection or connect has come up in every single one of them. Yeah. and how critical that is at this time with what we're going through. Well, especially these times, right? Because social isolation, you know, physical social isolation yeah. is not good for most of us. We're not panda bears, you know, we're not polar bears. We are herd like critters and we do best thrive best in connection with others. And when that's impossible, or the flip side of that, little too much connection, but we're not used to it, don't know what to do with it, that's also very, very unsettling. Because now, on top of being uncomfortable, we have all these uncomfortable feelings about, I shouldn't feel that way about my family, my roommate, my uncle, whatever it is, right? Right, right, And so it's a double whammy. Yeah, we haven't touched upon that yet. Like the feelings associated, great point of if you are suddenly in a space where everyone's around all the time. Yeah. 
Yes, we, we have an old country western song for that. It's called, How Can I Miss You When You Won't Go Away? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Levity is really important. Do you see how that magically changes the energy? In an instant, yeah, there's a reason yeah. for that cliche that laughter is the best medicine. Because when we can do that, we're supporting our immune system, we're changing our energy, and we reset that's an opportunity to reset. And that's kind of what we were going to talk about today is the idea of self-care. So that's, as I said, not only crucible, crucible, crucial, well, that's a good <laughs> but an, it is, uh, but it's also non-negotiable, especially in times like these, because if you're probably listening because you're a helper healer agent in the world, you can't do that unless you are prepared, unless your bucket is empty enough to carry the water for somebody else, mm -hmm. unless you are rested enough, you have enough energy or bandwidth. All the people have different ways of talking about it, but it's the same thing. You can't help another if you cannot take care of yourself first. Non-negotiable. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 And so we actually talked about the idea of, you know, in jargon speak, which is just a way of categorizing different things like diagnoses, uh, medical professionals, they have a code or a, a DSM five version of that because it's just an easy way to go. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, that's what it's for. Right. But it's often used to keep people out. Oh, well, we're talking about this kind of thing. You know, you wouldn't understand. Now is the time to. Pff, Give all that the heave ho and say, what do you mean? What do you clearly mean? Because what are we trying to do? We're trying to make all this information accessible to people because if it's not, pff, waste of time. Okay, so what do we mean? Self-care, anything you want it to be. Let's start with something really simple. You like chocolate? Well, go for chocolate immediately. But the idea is where do you move beyond that? We're having a grown-up conversation here. We want to support ourselves in self-care with good, positive things that will help. And that means things like rest. And that makes things like a lot of water, right? Especially in this particular virus's case. A lot of water. Warm water. Hot things, right? Um, that is productively supporting ourselves. What else? I already said rest, but I mean real rest. I don't mean with electronic devices surrounding you. I do not mean with the notifications and pings on. I do not mean, you know, those hours somehow between 2 and 5 a.m. Uh, no. I meant let's make a concerted effort, right? Yeah. And it's all in support of ourselves. What about your favorite foods, but the healthiest iteration of that? What about making things with people, which actually brings you in that connection, but also it, it's a new novel way to come together and get what you want. I'm back to what you want, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be happy. Fine. What makes you happy? I want to share a conversation. Great. What do you want to talk about? It's all of this. Terry, this is just consciousness in action. Yeah. Right. But this kind is for ourself. And then we're prepared to offer it to another, right? Yes, I love it. And you, you just made me smile because I'm not kidding. Yesterday, I made my lunch and I said, all right. And it was a conscious thought that I went through. And I said, I'm going to slice up this pear and I'm going to make myself a spinach salad. And I put some fruit on it and I put all my stuff on it and healthy. And I shredded a little some carrots and did all that. And then I went to the pantry and I said, and a little Debbie snack cake. <laughs> And that was my, because I'm I, happy you know, just listening to you. So I must be a foodie. <laughs> but I said, I'm making these conscious efforts of eating healthy, but I'm yes. also going to honor this fact that I really just want to give myself a chocolate nutty buddy bar. <laughs> and so exactly. I'm doing it. Well, yeah. and, and along those lines, I am not a holier than thou person. Everybody who really knows me and I suspect they're already figuring it out. I am down to earth. I'm from Mississippi. Okay. I am straight up. That's how we roll. And one of the things that I want to say along this line is what makes me happy. We're back to this thing. You said, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. I said, what do you miss? I went, I miss hanging out with my pretend, long-term pretend sister and having a beer. Great. Digital. 
right? Yeah. And yeah. so we're making appointments now to, it's not about the beer, trust me. It's about the idea. I don't even like beer. I just like having one with her. Yeah. And so this is the kind of consciousness about pulling that apart. I don't do it automatically. I go, what can I reproduce? And what is the part that I'm giving myself? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And it, and it, and what a powerful, beautiful, again, it comes back to connection that happens in what you just said about having the beer with your friend, but it's, it's the, it's the power of connection. Yes. Um, yeah. I did a zoom, a zoom um, meeting with all my high school girlfriends because we get together every four to six weeks to have dinner together. And we can't nice. do that. Obviously it was so wonderful. We didn't eat food, but we were in our PJs and snuggled up in our blankies and we just chatted and chatted and chatted. And the connection yeah. was beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Well, there's lots of digital parties happening. Yeah. You know, it's not just about business. It's not just about serving people. This is a really good time to say that, as a matter of fact, because all of us are working so overtime to do resources for people and this and that and the other. And we're just, I'm running three times as fast as I run and I run fast. So, <laughs> That's kind of exhausting. What does that mean for all of us? Probably the same ones listening right now. That's another place where I go, what is it besides feeling compelled to pay forward what people have given you? What is that that you are seeking? Yeah. Okay. And part of what I'm seeking is the idea I have been helpful. I have honored what people have given me. I have uh, done my very best to create my very best iteration of this for you. It's a gift. I'm a gift giver. Oh, I love giving gifts. And so this is the kind of thing that I think we're talking about that's easily lost in the kind of prim services oriented things that we're doing right now, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not as serious or as good or any of those things as Tara Brock. And I'm not even like one of her tribe, but I care about her loveliness and the way she can say a steady heart. And I went, oh, yes, yes, that really rings a bell with me. And I'm going to incorporate that into my self-care. What gives me a steady heart? And part of it was telling people who I had selected and knew, ah, yes, a steady heart. I'm passing this on to you as a gift because I know this message is for you. It's not just indiscriminately spraying it all over, you know, all over everybody. Right. We give that gift of ourselves. And so, what does it feel like? It feels done. Beautiful word. Complete. Whole. Yes. 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 Right. And so, in that way. We're just right back to using connection as self-care, but we're doing it mindfully, right? Yeah. This is consciously. Right. Yeah. Thanks for that. I love that. And I think that. it's beautiful. And it, well, and, and it comes back to, a, with me at least, giving that intention up before so of let this reach the people who it's meant to reach. Those who are seeking, seeking guidance or understanding, mm -hmm. help. Yeah. I, I think we do help people when we help them ascertain what are they seeking. Yeah. Right? That is a big part of the private work that I do is helping people get clarity about what is this disquiet or what is this unhappiness or what is this pattern. I think it's a great gift that we're giving them, helping them find out what they're seeking. Yeah. Wonderful. And so that kind of segues us into then other care and yeah once we're able to do the self-care part of it and find those things um we, we are able to help others absolutely so if we're doing self-care to the point where we are what they call officially self-regulated you know it's an official word what does that mean it means i'm ready right it yeah. means i'm grounded ready prepared in my capability in my resourcefulness, in my mindfulness, in my consciousness, I'm ready. I'm ready to help you out. And when we take our self-regulated self into the other arena, right, that's when we are able to help others co-regulate. What does that mean? It means in energetic terms, because, you know, that's mostly what I do is, is the idea of energy work. 
But that means that my frequency of energy that I'm putting forth to you, you are beautifully responding to because you're actually reacting to it first right. because it's not conscious, right? Conscious is responding, right? You are reacting to the energy I'm putting out there. So that is how we start co-regulating with others. That is a, a gift we give to them. My readiness moves into your arena where I am broadcasting this frequency of grounded readiness. And I'm also trying to make it an accessible frequency by talking in plain English, right? that's when other people are beginning to react to my energy. And that's what I know. I'm consciously trying to co-regulate my space. Uh, other people might say, oh, we're offering coherent energy to that which might be incoherent. And we're in training our coherent energy over to them. Well, it gets really complicated, <laughs> right? And so I just say, mm-hmm. That is absolutely true, and I love talking about that. But to make it widely accessible, I'm just saying, when I show up ready, calm, and grounded, yes. and conscious, yeah. you can come here too. Right, and that was the first thing, I, the word that popped into my head was calm. Mm -hmm. Just giving that, that sense, which yeah. is very much craved right now, mm. is, um, that calm energy, I love it. Absolutely. Okay. Because, you know, we talked in the past about children a little bit, but the idea is we are predisposed as humans to seek guidance and leadership, usually from a tall person or the person in charge, right? And just because we grow up, it doesn't change that, which is why it's so crucial for us to be great leaders and modelers of better than this. And you can see what happens when we don't have that, right? Right. Because our innate sense that causes us to seek that is given either misinformation, bad information, or it's not honored. Their role in what they're supposed to do is not honored. Right? Yeah. That's where lots of stuff starts to fall apart. And that's why you and I know this is what we're modeling to people, the calm. It's not just the information. If I can't read it because I'm so upset, it doesn't matter. Right. right. If I don't trust you, I'm not listening. Right. Right. Yeah. If I see you doing wildly different than you're telling me, I ain't looking anymore. Yeah. Right. So let's use the fact that all of us are wired to seek better up. Right. Some kind of leadership or better guidance. And let's provide that to one another. Yeah. So, yeah. so what are some ideas for people to, to use for self-care? Um, the, the ones that I love to use are called emotional first aid because they cover a lot of territory. And that's a very everyday name for how to get your nervous system back on track and calm. Right. And you'll remember we have a two part nervous system. This part is sympathetic in sympathy to whatever happens. Something out there creates something in here. Right. That is reaction. But we luckily have a two part system and this is the parasympathetic that resets. Right. So it will do its job as it can, but it may take a while, depending on your background. So emotional first aid is sort of artificially and quickly engaging with the parasympathetic so we can rebalance and reset. So part of that breathing. Yeah. I'm not a big breather. Don't love to breathe, but I understand it's so important, right? right? And so what that means is, is my breath up here right now? That's not very helpful. I need all my breath, right? And this is just how we talk. So what do I do? One of my favorite things to do is the, oh my gosh point. I just go, oh, because that shocks just a little teeny bit shocks open our diaphragm and we draw in a breath naturally <gasps> right and I go oh yeah self-care got that yeah okay <laughs> breathe love it breathe right simple stuff like that um this this is 
this is what I wrote for children. It's compassion and action, emotional first aid for children. But I want to assure everybody listening, if you take out all my hopefully really helpful uh, differences that I talk about, how children are different than adults, if you just strip out those, it's for everybody. <laughs> Right. And so it has lots of interventions, I call them, or strategies. So this was one that is just a casual one, conversational one that I use all the time. And there are others which involve just holding our head. You know how when you were little and somebody just went there, there and they soothed your head and whatever. (laughs) These are nature's soothing points. These two eminences here, these two little lumps that you have, we have acupuncture points across here and the third eye right so we have so much right there that's all you have to do let me just think about this go ahead and breathe while you're at it let me just think about this oh goodness and then i love the gary craig school where he just tells the funny truth he goes wow that's a biggie wow yeah that's a biggie yeah right here right now that's a biggie Okay. It's amazing how long 60 seconds is, by the way, because we haven't yes. reached it yet. But isn't that wonderful? We can say to each other, could you just give yourself the gift of 60 seconds? Right. Well, of course I will. And then you do it with them and they go, how long do we do this? <laughs> 15 right? seconds in, right. <laughs> but the great news is once they ask you that, you know they're kind of back online. Yeah. Right. And that's what we want to give them. Some others, this is one of my favorites. I sent it out. I sent it out to the school system here recently um, because their teachers are flipping out. Of course they are. Not only is everything asunder, but now they're being asked, well, could you do all this online? And I, if you've never done that, well, could you figure it out? And, and how about talk to all these parents of your students and the teachers are melting down. Of course they are. We're asking too much, right? too much too long so here's a great one for everybody and and this is another adaptation in the emotional first aid toolbox hand on top of hand on top of sternum okay so you can tell we're getting the collarbone points the thymus point the heart chakra and the heart itself which the Chinese call the emperor that tells you how big that is right yeah And the first thing we do is we just breathe in and we're going to do it three times because breathing is grounding, right? So, and yes, you can use your nose too if you'd rather. (sighs) Nice long exhale. One more time. Phew, I felt my jaw relax. There you go. Beautiful. We do that three times in general, changing our hands for each one. But by the time you've done that three times, you've probably spent, mm, there's another minute and a half, 90 whole seconds of your life. But by the time you've done that, I guarantee you, you're probably back online and you can figure out what is causing that distress. And when you do that, we can put it right back in. Okay, so if you said, well, uncertainty, that I just, I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. That's what's really upsetting me. Great call. You don't have to stop there. Great call. Put it back. Right? It's about uncertainty. Okay, so we're going to breathe in and out and in and out and in and out and swapping our hands. And the way this old algorithm works is to say, I'm okay, and it's the uncertainty. That's what I'm thinking about, right? And do it again. In and out, and in and out, and in and out. And now what's present? Well, it's that it's scary that nobody knows. Great, put it back in. I'm okay, and it is scary that nobody knows. And let's breathe on that again. And we do three more times. You see how this works. We're getting clarity. We're getting grounding. We're getting to the rub of it. And now I'm back online. Well, what is a good thing to do in uncertainty? Uncertainty. Well, 
We can seek common sense information. We can keep ourselves calmer. We can look to those people who have modeled or leadershiped us into a better place before. We can use that trust that they have good information for us, right? And we can use tools, whether they're in my book or they're online or whatever, use the tools that feel the best. And I had such a job going through and choosing because I know at least a hundred. So I had to go through and figure which ones are the most effective and rapid and which ones are the easiest to remember because if I don't remember them, it doesn't matter. Right? Right. So let's, let's just put this out there. In these times of COVID-19, we're about to enter the apex effect for many of us. That means the most trouble, the most diagnosed, the most hospitalized, hospitalized the most in need of high care on every level. But it's not just physical. Huge amounts of emotional work is here to be done. Many of your viewers have parents that are locked into, and for every good reason, locked into care homes, hospitals, rehab units, uh, memory care units, retirement homes for their best and highest health right now. But health is not just physical. If we can figure out better ways, just like we talked about on our show last time with children, if we can figure out better ways to emotionally support them, and it doesn't matter what it is. My, my, um, I was reaching for something, but my brother just helped hook up our phone with our Alexa to our parents who are in lockdown and crafted this really neat thing so we could see each other. That's it. That's it. Connection. Here we are again, right? The prosody of your voice, which is a fancy word for how does it make me feel? How does it sound? Is it reassuring? The look on your eyes and your eyebrows, and your face and your jaws as you're talking to someone. Is it reassuring? Is it loving? Is it kind? Is it compassionate? Because they need that from us. Right? If I can't really do this, how can I do that that makes you feel that way? Right? right. Yeah. So this is what we're doing. So we've covered a lot of territory. In the end, it's about consciously applying self-care and a fancy name for a particular kind of that is self-regulation. And when we do that, we're able to give it as a gift of connection and co-regulation yeah. to everyone around us. Right. right. And that's what we need most right now because the healthcare professionals, God bless them, are doing the best they can. Everywhere at seven o'clock at night, you can hear people screaming and yelling out their windows and on their terrace going, yay, oh, thank you, God. you're our heroes, <laughs> right? That's because so we awesome. can't do that, right? We're not in that place. So what can we do right here where you are? What is the best thing you can do right now for yourself until you're good to go, ready? Yeah and then to others. What is yours to give? What is yours to do? And that's enough. Right. Beautiful. And I love it. So how do people find you? How do people get a hold of you? I hope they will. It's johndwhitis.com. J-O-N-D-I-W-H-I-T-I-S.com. That's my site. Um, On Amazon, you can get uh, several of my books. Um, This one I wrote about learning to ask good questions and get curious, because that's one of the best things that we can do for people is get curious about where they are, how they really feel, what's really going on for them, then you can help. And then another one I mentioned to you was those of you who are feeling compelled to do podcasts and groups, but you don't know how yet, and you're a little bit mm, maybe insecure about that. Well, yeah, it's brand new. Right. So giving great groups is a a template for all the things that I think you might want to think about. And you don't have to be a tapper to do it. The rules are the same. 
It really is about consciously offering them your gift. And then this last one is the newest one that we've got, compassion in action, because we want to create millions of children who know how to take care of themselves, and they learned it from somebody special. That would be you. And that is a life skill tool they'll take with them their whole life so that they'll be able to self-regulate. They'll be able to get to their resourceful self back online, right? Yeah. And once they do once they do that, and once they know that, that's what we call fostering resilience, yeah. right? Beautiful. So uh, I hope I see you. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, everyone, you need to go check out her site. And um, yeah, just so much amazing information. I think I had told you that when I was on there, I could have gotten lost for a month. Um, <laughs> through everything, which is wonderful. So, thank you so much. There's there's lots of great things out there, and um, mm -hmm. oh, that's the last thing I wanted to say. I'm on the humanitarian committee of ASAP, which is another large international group that I belong to. It's primarily domestic, but some some internationals on it. We got together and we put all these different resources that we had and knew about, and we put it all together on a site that you can go see free awesome yeah so go to www of course and then it's r for resources r for the number four r resilience dot here's the kicker support who doesn't want that www.r4r dot support and you'll see lots of videos so even if you can't read another thing because your eyes are rolling back in your head with all this stuff you can monkey see monkey do yeah, I love it. Well, I'm gonna go hop on, and I'll share it on the uh, I'll share it on the Facebook yes, please. page. Our, our humanitarian committee would be so proud that you did that because we worked so hard on it. For sure, I'll do that as soon as we're we're done with this, I'll, because okay. otherwise my little menopause brain. Will... <laughs> well, we're all a little bit overloaded, so empty your bucket. You know? Right, right. <laughs> all right. Well, it, this is always a pleasure. Gosh, I thank you so much, so much for joining me today and sharing your wisdom and beautiful insights. And uh, yeah, it's just wonderful. Thank you. Well, so much fun to talk to you. So be in touch. All right, everyone. Until next time, remember, be gentle with yourselves. Thanks. Bye-bye.